You know where you want to move. What is your next step? Welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, this is where we motivate, inspire, and encourage Black women who want to solo travel and Black women who want to move abroad. Do me a favor, click subscribe so that you can be informed of all the videos and content that we post here. Also, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and um, also share and comment below. Let me know how you're feeling. So you have picked the location. You know, sis, you know where you're going to go. And all you need to do is to figure out your next steps. What What's next for you? The big thing for me, if I could do my journey over again, there are a few things that I would do probably differently. Number one, I would begin decluttering sooner, sooner rather than later. Um, I think we sometimes underestimate how much work decluttering takes. Unless you are a super, you know, organized, streamlined minimalist. Now, if you were minimalist, it, it's not going to, you know, take you any time to pack up your stuff and go. But if you're like most of us, you may have a few things. And I know for me, I can share my story in that I, man, I made so many mistakes. I had a storage unit for three years. I downsized from a house, from a full house, like a 2,500 square foot house, you know, three bedroom, large kitchen, beautiful backyard. You know, I had all the, the, the patio furniture, all the stuff in the garage, all of that, okay? And I downsized to a two bedroom apartment um, a couple years before I actually moved. I think I downsized, what year was it officially? God, so what ended up happening is that I downsized and put my stuff in storage and had said that, well, I'm going to purchase the house. So I'm going to put this in storage until I purchase the house. Well, the house purchase never happened. And so what ended up happening is ye like, Three years later, that stuff was still in storage after I moved to an apartment. So for me, it's really once you make the decision that you are going to go to whatever country that is, sis, start decluttering right away. I mean, get rid of stuff that you don't need, you don't wear. The stuff weighs you down. And you would think that you know, it's just stuff, but it's more than that. A lot of times it symbolizes something else. I know for me, I was holding on to things that I should have let go a long time ago. For those of you who are familiar with my journey, you know that um, I'm a widow. I was holding on not really to his things, but just holding on to things that I should have gotten rid of a long time ago. So until I was forced to get rid of things like I literally was like I am not paying another month for this storage it took me a while but um surprisingly it just it yeah you need to start getting rid of stuff you need to stop shopping and as hard as that is because in my mind I was like well I need stuff to go over there you really don't because guess what in most cases they make clothes wherever you're planning on going you can shop there OK, you can shop in your new country. And a lot of times the things that you thought would be great in your in your the things that were great in your old country may not exactly fit well in your new country. I know for me, I was in Atlanta for what, 16 years and winter in Atlanta is nothing like winter in Paris. So I went from a very mild climate, you know, um, no scarves, gloves, maybe a couple of times a year, a year when it got a little cold. Um, I had a little cute coat, no boots. My boots were cute boots, not functional at all. To I moved to, you know, Western Europe where they have winters here. The winters here are cold and they're wet. You know, I need winter materials. I need winter wardrobe, winter wear. So um, getting rid of your things is a great way, decluttering is a great way for you to prepare yourself for your trip. Now, I know sometimes people want to take everything, but you really do have to make a decision. What are the basics that you can keep? If you're moving in the spring and you want to have a few things, like I don't know about y'all, but I arrived to Paris. Um, uh, I've been here for one year. I arrived, I you know, at 48 years old, moved here. I had two suitcases 
in my dog and I had a um, tote bag with my laptop. That was it. Now, does that mean I got rid of everything? No, I did not. And some of you may indeed be faced with getting rid of everything. Some people handle it very different ways. Some people will pay for their items to be shipped to their new country. There are shipping services that will do that for you. Um, you pack a suitcase and they pick it up and it arrives to the airport where you're you're flying into, the international airport or wherever you're flying to. So um, that is an option. For me, it made sense to just take clothes that I needed for the season. I knew that I was coming back for a visit in like two and a half, three months. So I made sure that I took what I thought I needed um, the other stuff I left behind, I knew that I was going to come back and swap out some clothing. I still had my apartment, so my things were just kind of um, tucked away and stored away. So you have to make the right decision for you and your needs. Some people are going to get rid of everything and they don't have, they're giving up their homes, they're giving up their apartments, they don't have storage. I would definitely suggest not getting storage. Storage is one of the biggest scams out here because I think of all the money that I spent on my storage and it kept going up year after year every year that storage went up okay every single year so storage is just the biggest scam it is in your mind you tell yourself oh it's only going to be for a month or two or three months I'm telling you I promise you that's how they get you they get you because it's always longer than what you think if you have to get storage I would say no more than one year because your storage rate most likely is going to recalibrate or go up after every anniversary it goes up it's not going down sure you get your one year special that's like the lowest lock you in rate for the most part after that year baby they they go up every year they're going up at least mine did and i had one of the larger public storage companies um in the u.s so if you can help it don't get storage to begin with but if you must get it for a year the the challenge with storage becomes what you don't see you don't use and you for, your brain forgets about it and unless you have a climate control unit for the most part all of that stuff in there you think that you have you think you have an attachment to it but by the time it came time for me to move that stuff out i was just like i was done i didn't want most of it I just, it, it becomes the biggest hassle. So please don't fall in the storage trap um, for those of you who are decluttering and getting rid of things. But you honestly do have to look at what you take a clear inventory of what you have, of all of your belongings, and ask yourself, do I want this in my new country? I think it helps to not have... Um, to have some space limitations because you might want to take everything like I need all of this I have not worn this cardigan in five years but I'm going to someday so I'm going to take this with me uh, I promise you the biggest challenge for many people you would be surprised to find out the number of people who do not move internationally they do not move abroad because they don't have a plan for their stuff or they have simply have too much stuff living here where I live now I'm in a you know 20 meter square which is about a 200 square foot apartment loft right and I promise you my garage was was bigger than this so size is relative and if you the more space you have the more space you will fill that is 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 I don't know what it is it's human nature so um if you can help it Avoid the shopping spree, sis. I, look, I know, I know, you know, January, you want to ball out. You know, you're trying to get the after summer sales, the white sales. I get it. But you underestimate what will work in, in your old country may not work in your new country. Even down to like linens. The pillow sizes are different here. The sheet sizes are, there isn't like a king, queen, twin extra large. It's totally different the, the measurement counts are different it's more they're counting by centimeters or whatever you know they use the metric system so what you have you know back home may not even work with your new surroundings so if you can avoid going shopping and avoid spending that outlay and not just the money 
also the physical space and time and energy it requires to keep new stuff. You know, just if you can help it, avoid shopping. Wait until you get to your new country. They have stores there. They have home improvement stores. I'm sure, I'm sure they have, you know, uh, clothing stores. You can do your shopping there and it'll probably be much easier and you won't be over buying and just taking things with you. So this is just a quick, you know, video talking about how to how to make that move, how to declutter, how to get rid of the things that no longer serve you. Because remember, you're looking to move out of the country. And so you want a lighter load. You do not want things and belongings to stop you from accomplishing your travel dreams. So you guys, make sure you hit the subscribe again. Go on ahead, hit the thumbs up on this video. Let me know what you're feeling below. Where are you in your travel journey process. Have you begun to declutter? Have you begun to move things? Um, I'm going to put a picture uh, in the comments below of my decluttering process. I had so many, oh my God, I had so much stuff. Um, just wouldn't, could not believe all the stuff that I had in my, in my, in my apartment. So I will put that in the comments below. Have a good day, everyone, and happy travel journey. Talk to you next time.